Welcome to this detailed analysis of the novel The Second Turn or Randamuram by M T Vasudevan Nair. Randamuram is the masterpiece of Janvid winning writer M T. This novel won him many recognitions including the prestigious Valar award. This is the story of Bhima, the second son, always second in line, a story never adequately told. M.T. conjured him up from the silences in Vyasa's narrative. M.T. Vasudevan Nair's Bhima is a revelation of a loner, eager to succeed, treated with a mixture of affection and contempt by his Pandava brothers, and with scorn and hatred by his Kaurava cousins. Bhima battles incessantly with failure and disappointments. He is adept at disguising his feelings. but has an overwhelmingly intuitive understanding of everyone who crosses his path a warrior without equal he takes on the mighty bagasura and jarasantha and ultimately duryodhana thus bringing the great war to a close however all of bhima's moments of triumph remain unrecognized and unrewarded If his mother saw glory only in the skills of Arjuna and the wisdom of Yudhishthira his beloved Draupadi cared only for Arjuna Randamuram is the retelling of a historical incident in an entirely new perspective that is usually unknown unheard or uncared for MT pioneered the style in Malayalam literature which manifested in the screenplay of a pathbreaking film or vadakan veeragada a northern folklore of victory featuring warring classes of north kerala from where a popular legend was retold in the views of the traditional antagonist without the alteration of any known instances and yet bringing him out clean and the climax so the witty swapping of the hero and the villain This style is also employed in his monumental work Randamuram where he retells the great epic Mahabharata in Bhima's perspective. The novel is broadly divided into 8 sections each of which is further divided into various subsections. Before starting the novel empty pens down a sort of dedication or remembrance offer to various legendary characters that feature in the epic the short and mellifluous passage renders beauty and grace to the novel here the author is identifying himself with the suthas or the traditional charioteers who are also noted for their remarkable skills in storytelling actually the epic itself is supposed to be been narrated by one such storyteller at the venue of the performance of a sacrifice by sage shaunaka empty retells the story cleansing it of all divine elements where even krishna is considered a mere mortal part 1 journey or yatra the first part of the novel is slightly at variance with the rest of it in as much as the story is narrated by the third person a sort of witness probably the author himself as opposed to bima who features in the rest of the seven parts this section which is the shortest though very important sets the stage for the novel to commence in a slightly negative way which foreshadows the apparent tragedy at the climax the scene begins with the frame of dwaraka which has been encroached by the raging sea and completely devastated where nothing remains but a rumble of ruins of various parts of the castle the mental composition and turmoil going through in all of the protagonist are being shown here yudhishthira tries to console him by his age old words of wisdom and aphorisms such as whatever that should begin is bound to have an end when waxing is seen be sure that waning is following so on and so forth while arjuna who is not so much of a hair splitting idealist or philosopher couldn't find much to console himself and was in the middle of an existential crisis with the futility of his life 
long struggle and the horrifying deeds committed to the committed in the war becoming apparent he laments on the unfortunate accident meted out to krishna the supposedly supposedly omnipotent and omniscient one becoming the prey of a mere hunter arjuna is enlightened that all the glories and victories that he had achieved through the auspicious and support of krishna who besides being his friend is in fact his other inevitable half have become meaningless then sahadeva who had not anticipated the present tragedy meted out to dwaraka and its inhabitants to be as terrible as was heard had his eyes planted at the horizon he also observes the still remaining youthful grace shining through the face of his brother nagla whose bark clothes and lack of royal cladding has taken its toll on his handsomeness nagla observes the big pillar of the ruined palace dancing in the waves and he contemplates its capability of circulating the precise time within which it shall be completely engulfed by the brine the sea water but he remains himself of the uselessness of such a display of mental prowess at such a juncture when they have set forth on their final journey of life after renouncing everything draupadi stood staring at her own feet in a bid probably to mitigate the mental damage inflicted by the disaster by being seemingly oblivious of the situation bima goes into deep contemplation of his reminiscences of the days that he spent at dwaraka learning mace fighting under the mentorship of balrama and his teachers seeming partiality towards his other disciple duryodhana with overwhelming feelings and a heavy heart accompanied by a conviction that nothing more remained to be done in life they set out on their final journey yudhishthira on the lead was trailed by his brothers in the decreasing order of their seniority and followed by draupadi they journeyed their way through the woods which were much familiar to them but as the rule of renunciation has it they were not supposed to chew the cud of past memories sweet or bitter as they may be and which should be destroyed by all means to maintain the serenity of mind which required for the vanaprastha while they were traveling the loud voice of bima was heard saying stop draupadi has fallen Yudhishthira without showing the slightest intention of slowing down declared she had long ago lost the moral courage to reach the divine abode in the corporal form while moving on and went on to recall that she had always been partial in her love for Arjuna and even while she was supposed to be with Yudhishthira her had her eyes upon uh, Arjuna and commanded that the journey continue irrespective of whoever has fallen or not Bima in the meanwhile tried to elicit some favorable response from others but no way even Sahadeva who had Draupadi in his fifth turn and to whom she was even like a caring mother did not stop to hear outraged by the cold behavior of his brothers Bima forgetting all the laws of vanaprastha turned back and went to the place where she fell down and took her in his arms Draupadi who was losing her consciousness tried to sit up and tried to utter something to which bima tried intently to grasp but her faint mumblings were too unintelligible for him and soon she collapsed into his mighty arms bima imploringly gazed at her for a while with sorrow and then he smiled here the first of the eight parts of the novel ends where we see the pantwas and draupadi retiring and how only the second turner bima who had an innocent heart to clear innocent heart clear of any philosophical intricacies or jealousies had true love and concern for draupadi even at the climax of their lives but his love was never noticed or reciprocated when draupadi was alive in the rest of the seven parts the circumstances from the pandava's childhood leading up to the present are narrated by bhima the protagonist part 2 whistles of an impending tornado kodum kattinde marmaram this section comprising of six subsections as the name indicates depicts the sowing of the seed of distrust and antagonism between the kauravas and the pandavas 
right from when the latter returned to the castle at Hastinapura from the forest following the death of Pandu and the self-immolation of his aggrieved second wife Madri. Here the story is narrated by Bhima as the first person who was then five years old when he notices the splendor of the palace and royal city, a kind of which he hasn't encountered. He anticipates the meeting of various people there with whom he was familiar through the tales narrated by the suttas, the wandering storytellers. He observes that Dhritarashtra appeared to be extremely strong even though as not as what had been exaggerated by the suttas. He also recounts hearing rumors that had been circulated in the palace that Bhima had broken rope by falling on it as a baby. He covets the scintillating ornaments worn by the princes. It should be noted that Pandavas were still under the impression that they were born with the blessings of various gods. On the eve of the day, for performing rituals for their dead father, Pantu, Bhima wonders instead he should pay obedience to Vayu, the god of wind, his real father, whom he remembers every night before going to bed. Though both the Kauravas and Pandavas underwent training and education together, Bhima had developed a sense of antagonism towards Kauravas, especially Duryodhana. Once he happened to encounter Duryodhana and Dushasana when he floored them completely, almost bent on the verge of killing them, thus clearly displaying his barbaric instincts and later, when he overpowered a raising wild boar which was choosing, closing on him with its horns directed to him, despite stern warnings from the elders, he continued the same attitude towards them and was even attempted to be murdered by Duryodhana and party by drowning him after getting him drunk but had a narrow escape. As they grew up, Bhima had his body built disproportionately. At the day of debut, his maze fighting display with Duryodhana almost turned into a duel, especially by the virtue of the ferocious aggression on the part of Bhima inflicting several blows on Duryodhana and had to be interrupted by their teachers. That night, he celebrated his apparent victory with intoxicating drinks and the flesh of a maid. Part 3. Paths Through the Forest Vanavidigal Here the Pandavas are enticed to retire to a forest called Varna Vatha with sweet words and promises of the charm of a festival that is scheduled to take place there. Yet the splendor of the celebrations was incommensurate with the expectations though Bhima notes that the elephant race caught his admiration. The evil intention behind sending Pandavas to the forest was to burn them down with the lac castle that, has, that was constructed especially with uh, inflammable materials which was recognized at once by the cunning Kunti and they were later informed about the same by a spy of Vidura. They performed a sacrifice for their forefathers and a god was sacrificed, a part of which was removed to the kitchen to be served as prasad. Just then a tribal woman with her five sons, one of whom was um, as big and enormous as Bhima, came to beg. Shri Kundi, seizing the opportunity as a boon bestowed upon by their forefathers who were pleased by the oblation offered, led them inside, served food and wine and let them sleep there at night. Her plan was that when the castle was burned that night, the charred body of the tribal people would recreate the impression that Pandavas along with Kunti are dead, as they could stay secretly and be aware of the situation. As planned, the Pandavas themselves set the palace on fire and they escaped through the tunnels constructed by the miners of Vidura. Bhima murders Purochana, the servant, by dealing him with some blows and throwing him into the fire. Afterwards, they escaped deep into the forest where they encountered Hidumbi, a forest-dwelling tribal woman, or an Adivasi, or a savage. She presented them with some of the forest products and Bhima, true to his nature, got charmed by her and had good time with her to later grant her a son and also killed her formidable brother Hidumba who attempted to attack the group. They moved on to a village where Bhima killed yet another demonic cannibal who used 
to hurt the people there and while there they heard about the swayamvara of draupadi where one has to hit a mark to win her they all go disguised as brahmans and arjuna displaying his skills of archery and winsor after a short commotion they took her to their hermitage and called out to their mother that they have brought bought arms kundi asked them to share it equally and yudhishthira interpreting it to his advantage causes a confusion to resolve which notable people like krishna balrama and vyasa arrives part 4 the heart of the dice aksha hridaya when they returned to hastinpura as from the forest they made their claim over half the kingdom which they rightly deserved but was given a dense forest called kandava which by their efforts and able administration was made into a rich city with good population draupadi had yudhishthira as her husband in the first turn and the rest of them in the order of decreasing age those who try to encroach into the privacy of the couple when it is not their turn are liable to be punished with the banishment of 12 months bima who tended to lose control on more than one occasion managed to discipline himself with great restraint arjuna who made a mistake of accidentally entering the palace where draupadi was with yudhishthira went to exile and during that period ma- married three other p- women there was four months to go before draupadi would be bima's so unable to douse the flames of his carnal fire he went deep into the forest in search of a lover and finally ended up with reaching a kashi where he married the princess balandara and returned home back with her years went on and yudhishthira planned to perform rajasuya a sacrifice for which they had to defeat all the neighboring kings including a formidable jarasantha then draupadi called bima and presented him with a jewel and showered honey coated words on him and requested him to protect arjuna and to be with him to defeat the enemies bima defeated and killed jarasantha and entertained draupadi with the details of the clash who in turn submitted herself before him yudhishthira who was mad in the game of dice was lured into a game by duryodhana who had shrewd shaguni who is supposed to with uh, shaguni who is supposed to have mastered the heart the game of uh, dice he put his jewels gold palace kingdom and everything at stake one by one and finally when he was left with nothing he put his brothers when he lost them he put himself and became a slave to his foes then draupadi was also gambled upon and eventually lost her also as the game was progressing Bhima became more and more restless and angry as he could not bear the mischief being committed by his elder brother but since he was only second to him he had no power to voice his objection and this is seen almost ev- throughout the narrative all amidst all this commotion fearing vengeance dhridharashtra set the pandavas free and returned everything but while they were ready to set on their journey back yudhishthira was challenged once again to play to which he acceded and yet again it was disastrous part 5 flower with five colors panjavarna pookal here the five pandavas along with draupadi as per the terms of the gamble went to forest for exile where she occasionally points out her misfortune despite having been born to the king of such a prosperous kingdom and having five strong husbands as the pantavas thus intimidating them to avow vengeance krishna and balram occasionally comes and makes the matter worse by provoking draupadi about her pathetic condition at the present bima at again in the forest defeats kirmara a nashada or a barbaric savage and though he can overpower every very strong tribal uh people or cannibals he could not have mastery over himself as on more than one occasion he lost control of his mind seeing draupadi half clad who in turns wants him that it was yudhishthira's turn and he should wait for his second turn he wonders that the rishis great sages who have set moral and ethical standards and enunciated the norms such as celibacy chastity etc have violated those very principles themselves and recounts various instances in the past 
In the meanwhile, Arjuna plans to travel elsewhere to sharpen his skills of weaponry. The rest of them leads a nomadic life, wandering from place to place visiting hermitages. On one such occasion, Draupadi spotted a blue lotus, which she recognizes as Kalyana Saugandigam. She tells Bhima of her desire to have the flowers to be plucked from Kubera's garden. which might be garden so he is the right person to go bima goes there and revealed his identity but was detained by the guards for the entire night and the next morning the others were also sent for and they came and testified his identity draupadi mesmerized by the majestic splendor of the garden paid no attention to the bunch of flowers that bima offered to her and was later seen thrown on the floor but bima was not disheartened he continued to adore her bima sir as per his nature encountered and defeated another cannibal and what is said as katala whom he left unhurt while he tried to kidnap draupadi yudhishthira quite paradoxically which will become apparent at the climax remarks that wherever they go these savages will always be there to give them trouble their 12 years exile was drawing to a close after which they had to spend an year absconding and should they be discovered they would again have to go through the entire cycle of exile and hiding again so in order to fulfill the treaty they decide to go into hiding in the kingdom of virata disguised part 6 virata the kingdom of virata during the period of secretive exile all five got employed in virata's court claiming to have been the servants in yudhishthira's court Yudhishthira assumed the name Kanka and had the job of keeping the king amused by his talking and playing dice. Bhima rightly became a cook named Valada. Arjuna acted as a hermaphrodite, Brahmanala, and taught dance to princes. Nakula took charge of the stable, while Sahadeva became the lord of the cattle, and Draupadi as Sairnadri became the personal maid of the queen. During that time a wrestler from the distant land and challenged came and challenged if anyone could defeat him he defeated all the powerful men one by one including the powerful soldiers but was defeated by Valala once Kijaka the army head and the brother of the queen saw Draupadi and got charmed by her expressed his desire to his sister with her bidding he tried to molest Draupadi She was pulled and dragged even before the king who chose to remain apparently oblivious to everything except the game that was going on with Kanka who was even indifferent to it and scolded Valala when he tried to turn up at the scene Draupadi later meets Bhima to save her from the mess and also laments about the apathy of Yudhishthira who is though the first turner shows no concern bima azajas her grief and tells her to bring kichaka to a specific location where bima himself lay down pretending to be with rapati waiting for kichaka after a strong fight the mighty kichaka was overpowered and killed by bima time went on and somehow duryodhana and the party somehow sensed the presence of pandavas in virata and on the last day of their stipulated period mounted an attack on virata thus stealing all their cattle while the king dumbfounded and left with no clue as to what should be done the five came up and defeated the opposing troop and secured back the cattle before revealing their identity and were paid due respects and honor krishna was sent to demand their rightful share of half the kingdom as the period of exile stipulated by the treaty has expired as expected krishna was unheeded and both sides undertook preparations for the war part 7 torn clothes jirna vastrangal this part deals with the great kurukshetra war fought between the kaurava and the pandava brothers Here the Pandavas are seen settled in their army camps at Kurukshetra at the eve of the great conflict they chose Drishta Dhyamana as their army leader as opposed to Bhima's suggestion of Shikanti and each of them plans to target a particular person from the opposing side Sarvada son born of Balandra prince of Kashi to Bhima comes with his mother to help him during the war bima remembered his ingratitude of having not even sent a messenger all these days 
but Balantra showed no signs of despair or sorrow but appeared to be happy about their reunion. After the first day of the war, Bhima surveys the dead from both sides and finds that the young prince Uttara has been killed. Prince, he is informed about the initial despondency that appeared to overshadow Arjuna with grief and how Krishna managed to revive him by his splendorous exposition of soul that it is immortal and just like a person changes his stone garments to select a new one. The soul makes takes new bodies. Arjuna wants treated with this Krishna's cure again gets ready for the battle as the war progresses. Bhima went on bravely, rushing through the ranks, thus venting his anger and vengeance with which he had been occupied with all this time and giving tough time to formidable, formidable foes like Bhishma, Drona, Duryodhana and Karna. At one time he even fought with ten warriors simultaneous, yet coming out victorious. As days went by, count at both the camps went on diminishing. Bhishma was felled by Shikanti, Drona by Dhrada, Drishtadhyumana, Karna by Arjuna, and all the Kaurava brothers except Duryodhana had died at the hands of Bhima. On the 18th day, with nine surviving from both the camps put together, Duryodhana set out to his final clash with Bhima. Bhima tried his level best to defeat Duryodhana, who with his extraordinary skills in mace fighting put up a stiff resistance, but was finally felled by Bhima with a false move violating the norms of the play. Thus, the legendary Kurukshetra battle fought between the two great armies due to a close. With eight people remaining, the five Pantavas, Ashwatma, Kripa, Krithavarma, were all who remained with everyone else, including all the sons of Pandavas, born to all their wives, killed. Part 8. Parandage Paidrugam Finally, the war was over and the Pandavas were set to conduct the pujas and ceremonies for the deceased. Just as they were doing it, Kunti came and to the shock of Bhima revealed that Karna, whom they had seen all the while as an enemy, was their elder brother after all. She had Karna born before her marriage and fearing public contempt, she sent him with the flow of a river. At the time Bhima started, being suspicious about his own identity and started questioning himself who he was. Yudhishthira, alarmed at the calamity and having had the fate of getting his own elder brother Karna killed, decided to vacate the throne and handed over the scepter to Bhima, who became apparently appeared to be amused at the prospect, though it was short-lived. Draupadi came and scornfully mocked him and lamented that she never had the fortune to become the queen because if Bhima became the king, then Balandra would be the queen, and Draupadi would be at her mercy. Also, Kunti later ruined the desire of Bhima by commanding him sternly that he wasn't fit to rule, as he had no knowledge of the disciplines that a king should know. After Yudhishthira was crowned, Dhridharashtra, Vidura, Gandhari, and Kunti took a staggering decision of renouncing to the forest. Even after they had gone, Bhima was very disturbed with the question of his identity. After a few days, the brothers went to the hermitage in the forest to visit their elders. Yudhishthira went on search of Vithura, who had gone elsewhere and witnessed his death. After coming back, Yudhishthira informed Bhima that Vithura was his father. Hearing this, Bhima was more eager to know his own identity. So he pestered his mother over and over until she finally confessed. She admitted, Karna was the son born of the charioteer of King Kunti Boja, who gave me a little solace when I was tired serving the sage Durvasa. Since I wanted to have a son of wisdom, I approached Vidura. As wives are mere wombs to accept the seed of the progeny to continue the race, and finally to have a strong son to conquer, I wanted a powerful and muscular man. As I kept watching, came a Katala, storming, and I had him. With this revelation at the climax, Bhima finds himself to be in the shoes of Oedipus. That is the case of enlightenment, leading to a tragedy. He is alarmed by the fact that he has killed his own father. Let's see the analysis of the main character, Bhima. Though the novel features all the important characters in the epic, 
some are rather more important and hence especially highlight so bima is the protagonist of this novel as it unfolds his perspective he is described as a yogi who had some mischief in the original classic which has been highly inflated by mt he is shown to be innocent instinctive barbaric and extremely powerful all these qualities painted in detail by mt finally becomes apparent and its causes become obvious towards the end he shows the savageness of a tribal when he by his ferocity murders hidumba and the way in which he felled the other uncivilized brutes his brutality is very much evident by his dealing with duhas dushasana in the battle where the latter's chest was ripped open and his blood drunk he even takes a handful of blood to apply to the hair of draupadi in order to appease her his inability to control his carnal instincts and becoming violent at its refusal also brings out this apparent flip side of his personality he unable to wait for his second turn goes into the forest in search of a lover and his apparent deserting of balandra helps to reinforce his point but when looked from at nad from the other side he is an innocent and loving husband who did not keep any hatred within himself just like a tribal he instinctively expresses his emotions without any hypocrisy as in yudhishthira he is shown to be a very loving husband caring for all the desires of draupadi who in turn saw him as a tool to address her cravings his mother never recognized his merits and saw him as undisciplined and unworthy to be a king he was second to the throne after yudhishthira second to draupadi in his claim over her and finally second as the recipient of her love and was always desi- destined to be a second turner and finally this tragedy is complete with this with his enlightenment randa muram the second turn is an apt title as the novel brings out how bhima is always the second in preference he has urges to become the king to claim over draupadi and to secure her love but was unfortunately always granted the second turn up empty clearly depicts bhima's failure to carve out a space for himself randa muram shows bhima's life with the plot and the sequence slightly modified to suit the intent of the author empty thank you